We can see that the money supply grows at a pretty fast rate. At the end of 2007, it was more than double what it was in 2002. So how does that come about? Well, that's one of the most fascinating aspects of the money supply. Banks can actually create money. This is Mr Smith. Let's say Mr Smith goes to his bank, the First Bank, and deposits 10,000 Rand. Our First Bank creates a demand deposit in Mr Smith's name. This is a liability in the bank's financial accounts. It owes this money to Mr Smith, and the bank must allow him to withdraw it whenever he wants. Now, how does this deposit affect the money supply? Well, the amount of cash in circulation outside the banking sector has decreased by 10,000 Rand. Note that cash, coin and banknotes held by banks are not considered part of the money supply. But while the amount of cash in the economy has fallen, demand deposits, indicated by the letter D, have increased by 10,000 Rand, the amount of Mr Smith's deposit. The composition of M1 money has changed, but not the overall amount so the money supply has not changed. But what is the bank going to do with this 10,000 Rand? Do they just lock it in a safe until Mr Smith wants it back? Well, no. Banks, like any other business, want to make a profit. And one of the ways they do this is by lending Mr Smith's money to other clients and charging them a higher interest rate than what they've offered to pay Mr Smith. So banks won't keep all the money but will rather lend out some of it so that they can also earn interest. However, by law, banks are obliged to hold 2.5% of all deposits in the form of a cash reserve requirement with the South African Reserve Bank. The bank's free to lend out the rest of it. They can generate income with 9,750 Rand that's not actually theirs. Now, assume the bank has another client, Mrs Brown, who needs a loan. She needs 9,750 Rand, and she has a reliable credit history, so the bank approves the loan. In their books, this is an asset, since the money is owed back to them. The bank has acted as an intermediary. It's transferred Mr Smith's surplus cash to Mrs Brown. Now, Mrs Brown then uses this loan to pay Speedy Motors, a down payment for the little car she's buying. Speedy Motors, in turn, deposits this payment in their bank, called Second Bank. And Second Bank then creates a demand deposit in their name for the amount of 9,750 Rand. Now, the money supply has changed. Remember, it didn't change with Mr Smith's deposit, but by lending money to Mrs Brown, who paid Speedy, who deposited that 9,750 Rand, a new demand deposit has been created. The banks are creating money. Second Bank can go on to lend most of that deposit to one of their customers, mm -hmm. excluding the 2.5% cash reserve requirement, of course. And so it continues. With each new loan that banks approve, made possible by demand deposits from their customers, the money supply increases. Other financial institutions can act as intermediaries and transfer money from here to there. But banks are the only institutions that are allowed